hey Rick. <laughs> What's up? All about that joy. All about the joy. And I'm in a bad mood already. <laughs> oh, let me just put on the. Let's see if we can change that. <laughs> I know. You know, it's just weird. So everyone, I'm using a new laptop computer and a new camera and a new lav mic and whatever. And Rick and I were just having these conversations because uh, I'm having issues with restream with the customer service situation part, which I understand why they do what they do, which is they have 24 seven. So anybody at any time will take over your case. The problem is, is that when it's an ongoing case, like I've been having, what were you saying? It's not good. What did See, you say? I used to be in IT. So when you're in IT, you're supposed to have a ticket open and anybody who works can, what's, you know, they look you up, what's your information, they find your ticket, they read everything. So you don't have to regurgitate the whole thing over and over again. And then they go, okay, now I'm up to speed. What's going on now? Let's see how we can help you. Instead of you having to repeat it over and right? that's ridiculous. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening. And then, so I bought this laptop specifically so I can start dealing with this issue, but also because I need a new laptop and I have to travel, right? So mm. it's fine, but it's a gaming laptop. Like I bought it, oh. so it had all the bells and whistles. So that's you know? a good one. It's a good one. And it cost me way too much money than I needed to pay, <laughs> it but it's did. fine. So I go on to the chat to tell people, you know, in the restream and they're like, ooh, we really need you to be connected with the uh, whatever Ethernet and Ethernet not cable. just on the Wi-Fi and only use Chrome, whereas they were telling me before not to use Chrome. So I'm just saying I, today I have been tested. Let me tell you, child. I've been <laughs> OK. Let me tell you something else about customer service that pissed me off today because I just want to stress about this. So I work with a lot of banking people I have for 30 years. I hate to date myself, but. I know banking people all over California in every banking institution. The biggest ones are JP Morgan and Wells Fargo. And let me tell you the thing I can't stand. I can't stand when people do not respond to an email when it's been an ongoing issue. And mm -hmm. by the way, I'm not asking these people to do anything other than like banking thingamajiggy. So today's email was, or, or it wasn't, it was January 8th. I sent an email saying we need to change an address. Uh, we need to change an address for an account. Mm -hmm. So what are we, today's what, oh, the 18th. We've been going back and forth with no information. And today I lost it. I put our lawyer on there, not our lawyer. I put our CPA on there. I put my client on there. All of a sudden mm. responses. That's just disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So I responded and in a tone that was like, oh, so now you're going to respond. <laughs> you know what I, mean? like, I just went through that, too, because our company just moved cities and buildings. And so he's like, my boss, like, call all the vendors, tell me, change the address. And then this one, it was like four days before they finally did it. And I'm like, I'm not asking you to write a book. I'm asking you to just go in and data entry. Did that takes two seconds. Why does it take so long? Oh, it has to go through this, that. No, it's just changing an address. What are you talking or about? Just update me, right? Or just let me know. You know what, Rick? I can't get to this till next week on February, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> give me an update. I mean, yeah. look at things happen all the time. And right. there was a problem with trying to contact my client, which I understand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you don't tell me that information and you tell me the information's coming, I'm accept I'm expecting that the information is coming. But yeah, so I'm just not having a great week. Oh my goodness. How you doing, Mr. Dawson? Senor. I know. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know. He always changing his picture. <laughs> he likes to switch it up. Keep you guessing. I know who does. I know. Hi, Mario. <laughs> I miss you. M Mario's gonna come up on the show too as soon as he can. He's always welcomed. Mm -hmm. He, we were going to try to get him on last week, but he was a little busy. He was I don't know if he was traveling or what, but you can come up now if you want. Rick's going to have to send you the invite, but I don't know if you can, so no biggie. I, um, hey, Melanie. Hey, Melanie. Been? She Today she did it again. She what she do? She snuck in a sentence that said, you know, it's all about the joy. I'm like, ah, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Yay. <laughs> but, but you know what? Not even about this show, but it is really true. And I... Yeah. A couple of people have told me that they love the logo. They love the, the concept of all about the joy and mm -hmm. because it really should be. We need to change the dynamic. But Melanie, thank you. Uh, this is, I think, the second time Rick has told me that you did that. <laughs> oh, um, Rick, are you able to send him? 
the link? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, okay, did you watch the Emmys? I know you I did. did. You mentioned it, and I was like, let me let me try. Let me give it 10 minutes. And then I was like, I kept laughing. I was like, okay, I'm watching this whole thing because it was so funny. Wasn't it great? I've never saw an award show that made me laugh that much ever. Okay, Anthony Anderson, let's just give him his props. Mm-hmm. I didn't he even did. like sing. I was like, boy, he's singing. What? I didn't know he you could did. sing. He did so I, even the way that he walked in, because he did kind of the homage to Mr. Mm-hmm. Uh Mr. Rogers. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, that was. But he walked in with like a fur. I'm sure it was a fake fur coat, and he put it up, and then he he put on Mr. Rod. It it said Mr. Anderson's neighborhood or whatever, and so then he put on the house coat or whatever, Mm -hmm. and that was really well done. So the writing was brilliant. And then when he talked about Miami Vice, he switched to a white jacket. Oh my (laughs) god, that was funny. So funny. Oh, it was so great. (laughs) You know, it would have been awesome if Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas. I was hoping they. Why didn't they come? You know. Yeah, Yeah, they're probably over it. You know what I mean? They had their heyday. They're in their seventies. Yeah, but still. I started watching Miami Vice. Cheryl Burnett showed up. I know. Wait. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that in a minute, though. And so didn't uh, the other one, Joan Collins? I was like, Yeah, what's happening? Okay, let's get Mario. She He's looks here. good too. Hey, Mario. What's up? Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? Go what's like this with your on? phone for oh, my like editing. This? Yeah, for my yeah. editing. There you go. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing really well. Did you lose weight? I, yes, I did. Oh yeah, I can see it in your face. Yeah, I lost like 60 pounds. What? No way. Yeah. Wow. So, I've been out, out there. I don't think it's a congratulations thing, is it? <laughs> I mean, if that's what you're well, trying no, to do. Well, no, it's, it's, you know, I'm, work, I'm, on, I'm on my health journey. So, you know, just doing my thing. Mm-hmm. So, I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, I saw you Yo, jogging. I'm great. So you jogging yeah, I'm walking and going to the gym and changing my eating habits and Awesome. You know, I, I get bored doing the same thing. So if you saw I was at Disneyland, uh, what was that day before yesterday? Mm-hmm. So just, well, yesterday. Hey, was it yesterday? Yes, yeah, one of those days. But yeah, <laughs> I try to get out and just try to, to find ways to just stay f- happy and active. Mm-hmm. And so that was a new way to do it. I went to Disneyland. I did like 13,000 steps. Yeah. And just, yeah. just was going. Mm-hmm. Hi, Jason. What's up, Jason? Yeah. He said, congratulations I, on losing 60 pounds, brother. I always tell people, like, the reason why people gain weight is they don't they don't move. Yeah, people need to move more. That's all. And it's not. It's, you don't have to do a whole lot either. Just don't sit down all day. Because a lot of people just sit all day. Why am I gaining weight? Because you need mm-hmm. to move. Well, for me, you know, my, my situation is different. Because, you know, my right. transplant, I have, right. I'm on steroids. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's permanent part of my life. So that has right. to find creative ways to just get this weight off. Cause I'm trying to keep this transplant as long, long as possible. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Well, th- well, that's why I was hesitant when you first said it. Cause I, first of all, you look beautiful no matter how I see you. And so <laughs> I'm always trying to stop people from being like, Oh, you look so good because you're skinny because skinny don't mean no. healthy. Skinny, no, don't skinny mean doesn't it. mean healthy at all, but that's no, right. But no, I feel good. So no, That's thank true. you. I, okay. I I take that. I receive that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I am so happy that you you're feeling good. I'm glad you're on here because I'm always so worried. I'm like, can you come on today? And you're like, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Like I with everything going on with with my kid and everything's just been kind of crazy. And we're in that last with that final stretch. So we're just going, going, going. And I then I had I had to get rid of my car and get another car and so yeah wait was that a good thing yeah it's a great thing it's a great thing so yeah well so mario l- l- let me ask you this question did you watch the emmy by chance the other night no i watched mm-hmm. segments i didn't watch it i got i was you know i i tune in and it's i tune out it's all good anthony anderson was good i didn't watch it live i happened to hear like on tiktok or whatever that he did great so i wanted to support him and i was yeah. very hesitant Oh my God! Then I told Rick, and Rick watched it. It was so good. Yeah, it really was. Between him and his mother, they're pretty funny now. Oh, his mother cracked me up. Some people get annoyed about his mom. So for people who don't don't. know, his mom was stopping people who were talking too long. (laughs) So he kind of brought her on to be like, you know, your time is up with your acceptance speech. And right. all that was staged. There's no way she would have been disrespectful. And some of them just went with it. I thought it was hilarious. I yeah. well, and, and like a good little 
change in how they usually do with the music. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I think I think it put the fear of God a little bit in some of the people. They were trying to hurry because they didn't want to get yelled at by mama. <laughs> I know, I know. But, but she wasn't being disrespectful. She no. was funny. And she kept no, calling her really crazy. Funny. Well, you know, she started off trying, she wanted to be an actress first. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, she wanted to be an actress first. And then, you know, she didn't. And, you know, Anthony went on. So he, that's why he's always trying to put his mama on everything now. Mm. So. I think it's great. Beautiful. And their show, We Are Family, is is, is funny too. She's oh, I've really never seen funny. it. Okay, so I, I did not either. know that. What's it called? Yeah. It's a reality it's, show? No, it's a competition show. It's uh, it's called oh. We Are Family. And so what happens is they have they, these celebrities have family members come on and sing, and you oh. have to guess who their celebrity relative is. So and they'll give clues behind clues behind the person singing. So like I think last last night it was the celebrities were Tiffany Haddish, mm. Debbie Gibson, and Tamar wow. Braxton. Wow. So oh, wow. So like I think it was Tiffany Haddish's uh, aunt, and then it was Debbie Gibson's nephew, and oh, I think it, it was. Uh, Tamar Braxton and Tony Braxton's brother, because you know they only have one brother. Yeah, and if you brother. Ever, so if you ever watched uh, Braxton Family Values, you knew who it was right away. Right. So it's almost like a variation of uh, the Mass Singer in a way, sort of. Yes, exactly. But they're, they're you're giving people who aren't celebrities an opportunity uh, opportunity to sing and have a good time. And her mo- their mother is Mama Doris is Mama Doris. She's going to going to call it like she see it. You mm. know, so she's hilarious. Oh, that is so cool. I did not realize all of that. That is so cool. You know, I don't usually watch any reality or any competition game shows or whatever, but I would watch that to support her. She was hilarious. She was yeah. so funny. Oh, exactly. but she was just on that one time. So, oh, it's their show. It's her and Anthony. It's her, and her and Anthony. So it's Anthony's show. He's hosting. But just like, um, what was the other show they did with him and his mother when they had to get to the, who, uh, to I tell the truth? Seen- to oh, tell the truth. I've never they, seen it. Okay. Yeah. They have a show called To Tell the Truth. And all he did was have his mama sit in a chair over in the corner and give commentary. Oh, that <laughs> was so comfortable yesterday. Cause I was like, see, I, I did not know all this. So I was like, this is this woman is so comfortable on camera. Yeah. And she's so comfortable talking to all these ones because she's been doing it forever. Okay, good yeah. for her. And so, oh, and then that, and then him, he and his mom did a, a a a trip to Europe together, and they did a whole series on it on Fox, where they followed them throughout Europe. And no, it was on oh, E. Wow. It was hilarious because she had never been in, you know, to Europe before. So, and you know, she doesn't call him Anthony; she called him Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's such a beautiful relationship, and I think that's why also last night it worked so well because Anthony's spirit. I'm just going to talk a little bit about different award shows, like why the Oscars aren't doing so well and why people Mm -hmm. don't like to watch award shows. I felt like Anthony Anderson made the show about everyone else and not about himself as a comic, right? Because right now, everyone's trying to be like, I'm a comic, I'm going to come on the show and be blah, blah, blah. But Anthony Anderson and the writers, let's give props to the writers, turned around to the show about, and and Mari, I know you didn't see it, but you may want to catch it. Uh, Yeah, I'm not clips. Yeah, and it I was saw clips. all homage to all the old school shows. Like, mm-hmm. all, I mean, the actors came out from All in the Family, from Martin. Yeah, Martin. Right? Yeah, they were there, yeah. Martin. I mean, it was so good. It was. They well actually done. did the set of Martin and everything, and Cole was being Cole and everything. And cheers. Cheers. Yeah. And, and we can't um, forget. We can't forget um, the Lucy skit. <laughs> That Tracy was Ellis really Ross. good, right? That was. Yeah, really I thought I saw her. I saw Tracy Ellis Ross as, as Lucy, so I yep. didn't see that. And yeah. uh, Carol Burnett came out. Okay, Carol yeah. Burnett and what's the other one? Joan Crawford? Joan Collins? Crawford. Yes. Collins. She looks Joan good. Collins. Joan Collins. Yeah, Joan oh, yeah, Joan Collins. Collins. First mm-hmm. of all, both of them oh, yeah, yeah. in their 90s. And yeah. Joan Collins hasn't changed for like 30 years. <laughs> no, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No. So yeah. It was great to see them. And man, 90s, being 90 has changed. You got. You know, like when I think of nineties, I'm thinking like your cane mm-hmm. and you know. Well, you look, can at, look at Marla Gibbs because she looked great. She's over. Yes, great. yes, she's amazing. And she came out with Taraji. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. 
she was. So I, saw, I saw clips. Like I said, I saw clips. I saw the I saw the highlights, and I saw a lot of Anthony stuff. He said he's coming for Jimmy Kimmel for the Oscars. <laughs> he should, because as much as I like Jimmy Kimmel, he's just boring, and that's why they're mm. having him because there's no controversy. But Anthony Ed, I mean Anthony Edwards, Anthony Anderson was amazing last night. Yeah. Uh, well, I watched it last night. I don't know when it aired. Okay. It was the other night. On but, Sunday. It was Sunday. Yeah, he was re- Monday. It was Monday. Monday. Martin Luther King Day. And that's what that's they right. did. They yeah. did a, a homage to, to MLK, mm-hmm. too. So, uh, yeah, I was really impressed. It was really well done. And I just wanted to talk about old school. Let me ask you this, because you guys probably watch a lot more television than I do, just time-wise. Yeah. Do you think TV is better today? No. Nope. Or do you think it was better before? And why? Go ahead, Mario. Mario's already jumping in there. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, this new stuff, is, it's entertaining, but it's just not, there's no classic stuff that I remember. There's nothing that's memorable. Like, I can go back to a Lucy sketch. I can go back to All in the Family. I can go back to, to Jefferson's. I can go back to Martin. I can go to Living Single. I can go to Friends. I can name a classic moment in those episodes mm-hmm. and those shows and these new shows i i'm like okay haha you know and then i think it's so i think we're oversaturated with content oh, that, we don't, that you just you don't have the same feeling whereas back in the 70s 80s even 90s you would gather around the tv and everybody was watching the same thing so everybody yeah. had more relatable content to to relate to each other in terms of what was funny Whereas now there's we're so oversaturated and there's so much content. People are like you can call a friend and say, Hey, did you watch The Trust? And their friend will be like, What is that? I don't and even know like, what it is. Well, you just yeah, named exactly. two shows I haven't seen. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it, it's just I don't I don't just I don't think it's the same. But like those old shows, this 70s, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, I'm like, yeah, okay, but 70s 80s and 90s for sure was way better even 60s like okay you know, but what about like shows like game of thrones and succession which one big and beef and and i haven't seen all of these shows i've seen moments of them or whatever but are these shows and i'll ask rick to get rick to chime in go ahead you know how do you feel about it do you think is it our is it us being biased because we grew up in that time period or is it because the quality has changed. Yeah. Rick, what do you think? There's one thing, because Mario got me thinking, pre-internet, like you said, you know, you didn't have, everybody didn't have their own little separate device and go in their separate room. So you just naturally stayed together and watch whatever was on the TV. So like, yeah. unlike today, what was the demographic? Back then, everybody, because right. you all together. Right. Where now it's like, we're trying to target these people, target this people, da, 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 da. So I think, you know, it was different just because of that. That's one major reason. They also didn't have to tiptoe around every little thing as we do today. Yeah. Um, That's true. Just saying. I mean, but. that. I mean, I think I think there was something in the writing of Norman Lear short, uh, shows, but also bringing something to light that way was a much, it was, it, it was like a big explosion when Sammy Davis Jr. kissed Archie Bunker on the cheek, you know what I mean? And yeah. everyone had to talk about it, and it was a good explosion. It was scary and funny and and Sorry, interesting. But now it becomes a bigger deal because we already know about it. So racism isn't tolerated. So it isn't something we can just. You know, I like. I don't want to blame it on us being worse as a society. I want it to be that we've grown. Mm-hmm. So people always like to say this thing that I don't think I agree with is back then you could say certain things and get away with it. it yeah, you could. You could call people the N word and get away with it. That doesn't necessarily mean it was a good thing. It wasn't a good thing, but yeah, it was just a different time. But we were also thing. people of color were calling each other that on television, you know. So, mm-hmm. but there was yeah. a con- but, but there's a conversation to be had when it was the first time. Or I mean, what Norman Lear was able to do was make everyone, especially white people talk about something that no one ever talked about out loud. You know what I mean? And that's what was interesting about him. I have I have an interesting story for you in terms of Norman Lear. So, you know, it, we had All in the Family first, then we got Good Times, right? Mm-hmm. Well, did you know that the Black Panthers came up to Mr. Lear and addressed him head on at the studio and said, look, hmm. all Black people are not poor in the ghetto. 
Mm-hmm. And they they had a real hard conversation. And Mr. Lear, he then in turn created the Jeffersons. And that's yeah. how the Jeffersons came about. It's because mm-hmm. you had to have the conversations about mm-hmm. what was difficult. And the thing is, but you also had to have someone who was willing to listen and understand. And open-minded. Open-minded in every culture and every race is complex. And there's, and there's race class. I mean, there's class there's classes in every race you understand yeah. what i'm saying so oh, yeah. therefore you had to he he had to be addressed but they came in hot they came in smoking hot but let's give him credit because they couldn't have gone to talk to him if he wasn't open to listening to i mean you know what i mean they like waiting for him in the studio they got in wow <laughs> you know, but that's what i'm trying to say like i yeah. look at, i i revere norman lear and may he rest in yeah. peace he passed away I think he's one of the good ones, right? I me mean, too, a hundred percent. And I agree with you. I heard that story before. You know, I'm, you know, I heard it different variations. You know, and yeah. I don't care how it happened. What happened was someone turned around and told someone what they didn't know, and that person yeah. said, "You know what? Let's I, do something I didn't different. know that. Let me take that in, and let me see what I can do with that with my power." It's the yeah. same thing with um, Betty White. You know, yes. Betty White had that show. And they, she, she had a black man. I forget his name, and I'm so mad at myself because I promised myself I would never forget his name. And they wanted to get him off of the show, and she said, "Absolutely not. He is staying on this show. He is amazing, and you will not fire him." Blah blah blah. And she, oh, on the show. you know what I'm talking about? The Golden Girls when they went to the hotel. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Was, I know this is from this way is, before the Golden Girls. Oh. This is way before, so, and it was after not- Mary Tyler Moore. Before, I think, I think it was this before, was before that, wow. she had yeah. her own like variety show or something. Yeah, and and, yeah. and and they were trying to tell her she couldn't have a certain gentleman on her show, and she said, "No, mm. I will have a black man on my show, and he is Good. staying." You know what I mean? And yeah. I mean, it's kind of that thing. I mean, the reason why she's so revered isn't just because she was America's sweetheart, blah blah blah. blah. It's because mm. she had real integrity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Real integrity. So. Yeah. Fascinating. Another yeah. example I could think of, of course, you know, I have to go here is Gene Roddenberry. Yeah, we love him. But yeah, you know? for sure. For they, sure. They, America had a heart attack when Uhura kissed Kirk. And right. Well, well Uhura just being on the show. I mean, Uhura. period. Yeah. They were like, they didn't have black people in space. <laughs> <laughs> or Asian people either, I guess. Right. Um, Melanie, no people, Melanie said, too, I just want to uh, share uh, some comments. Melanie said, too many channels today. Absolutely agree. And um, she's saying, I know what you're talking about when we're talking about Betty White, I believe. Thank you, Melanie. Okay. Yeah, it. another another point I'd like to bring up too is I at least felt like back then a lot of the shows, even if it wasn't obvious, they kind of were trying to teach a little bit of a lesson, life lesson, something you know yeah. to learn from. Where oh. today it's just, oh, we just trying to be funny, and it's that's why I think oh. Mario's like I, that's forgettable today because there's nothing nothing to for your brain to latch on to. You just try to make me laugh, no. and then it's done. Where like especially Star Trek, so many so many things like tried like races and tried to teach you about you know how it's bad and da da da, yeah. get along with people and stuff. So, but we don't get that much today. Maybe a few, but not like before. Now I want to. Now you you brought up Succession and Beef. Now Beef was actually very entertaining. I watched Beef. And, I didn't watch all of it. I just watched a few episodes. Yeah. I haven't watched them. Yeah, it was it was entertaining. Um, Succession. I never really got into it. You know. To, it just was it was it wasn't for me. I'll just say that. I'll leave it there. Yeah, no, no look, at, I I try to watch a couple of shows and then you know of, of everything that's going on. But if it's not for me, it's not for me. And also, I just I say this respectfully. I'm jealous because I can just say one word. And Rick, if he hasn't seen the show, he'll see it by tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, how do you have that much time? Hey, Cynthia, how so you true. Doing? No so worries. True. Cynthia was going to try to stop by if she could get home early enough. Don't worry about it. No problem. We're glad you stopped by. Is that no, true? You... What Melly said? Didn't they cancel the show because Betty White didn't back down? That it's is possible. possible. It's possible. I, yeah. I don't know the rest of that, but that could be possibly it. I only remember the good part. I hate the thought that they actually did cancel the show, but I think mm. you might be right. Betty White yeah. was an incredible person. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. her. Was an incredible yeah, she was person. amazing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Carol Burnett is amazing too. Oh. So, mm. You can, uh, listen, I'll fight you over Carol Burnett. 
<laughs> all three of them. I think they're all good people. And, you know, we, yeah. we have to uplift the good people, you know, yeah. especially in light of the fact that there are so many bad people not wanting to be open minded and listen mm-hmm. and try to change mm-hmm. their ways after all this damn time. You know what I mean? For I sure. will say this about television. I love that there's so much m- more outlets and possibilities to see things but I do hate the lack of community around a show. Like I used to love being like, did you watch Seinfeld? Yes, I did. Not, uh, did you see that yeah. part? Or whatever it was, you know, whatever the show exactly. was. Uh, for me, it was X-Files, which is more dramatic. But I remember we would that's all Alma. watch X-Files and have a conversation the next day about what happened, you know? You know, that's your girl, Alma. She loves X-Files. Like, I just had to watch one the other day. So we're the same people, me and Alma, we the same. Let's we're do an same. X-Files show. Do an X-Files show and invite her on. Yes, do an X-Files show. That would be so cool. She Look at Mario. Quote really? lines. <laughs> she can quote lines. I'll set, the, I'll set that one out. Okay. Like, <laughs> I'm going to rewatch the whole thing by tomorrow. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love x You know what's so weird, too? Because mm. now I'll watch it. Like, every once in a while, it'll, it'll be on Comet or whatever. And I'll watch an episode. I'm like, this is so scary. How did I watch this? Because well, I don't right. like You don't like scary. scary. Yeah, hey, you know what? I loved me some David Duchovny. You could <laughs> not tear me away from that man. And now I look at him and I'm like, but why? Like, I'm so not into him. Now. Mm. <laughs> See how quickly it changes. <laughs> well, listen, you know, I was you dumb. <laughs> that's okay. It, it is nothing, it's wrong, nothing wrong with that. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Let's change the subject for a moment just because I want, we're at the halfway mark. Um, okay. Mario, if you can stay on. Rick, do you think you could play that? I would love to get Mario's take on his position being a married man on this TikTok video. You want to try that? We're going to change the subject completely right now. Already. We're going to see if he can do the share thing. and Because uh, God knows I can't do it on my regular computer. Pretty and it was on the Sherry show. It was on the Sherry mm-hmm. show. Yeah. Uh, Wait a minute. I watch this Sherry show every day. Which one is okay, it? Okay, well, then you'll know. But let's see for the other people who might be paying attention in the room, baby. Look at it. <laughs> Mario's like, like, it's all about me. <laughs> it's about me. You know that thing with uh, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade? 50 50. She going 50 50 with him, 50 50 with her. What y'all think about that? Because I don't know about this 50 50. You married? What do you think married. about 50 50? 50 like- 50 is us coming to the table every Friday working on it. Okay. Mm. So we just add it up and it's like, what you got and oh. what I got, and we put it together. I might have 500, he might have 1,000, or he okay. might have 200, and I might have 1,200. Yeah, we're broke. We no, 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 no. 200 and yes. 1,200 is different. <laughs> no, 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 Because you and I are single, we feel differently with the 50 to 50 right. coming to the thing. I'm like, if I got, if I got 50, you right. got 49, it ain't going to work. No, 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 no. <laughs> you got to tighten up Tuesdays. I got loosey-goosey Wednesdays. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you right now, I've done that before. I had 50%, and he had 1%, and the next thing you know, I couldn't buy no hair. I couldn't buy no fair. Okay? Because I'm putting you all the money. Oh, let me just tell you that. Me. Okay, let me give you some more context why this is such a funny thing to me. So today, I got a, t- uh, a TikTok from Joel. We all know who Joel is, mm-hmm. right? Now, mm-hmm. he's on TikTok like maybe once every three months. And I sent him a TikTok like three months ago. He responded to it. And then he sent me this other TikTok. And it was up. Uh, like it, it was about prenuptials, right? Like okay. should you sign prenuptials, you know what I mean? And I was like, are we getting married? Cause <laughs> good, I'll sign whatever you want, baby. Like, it was just really funny. <laughs> but it does, but but the 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 video he sent was kind of similar. This kind, but but it was a lawyer, right? Talking about okay. you should spend you know two or three thousand dollars before you get married on a prenuptial, as opposed to after the fact spending hundreds of thousands of, of dollars in a divorce settlement. You know what I mean? True. So with yeah. all that as context, okay? Okay. Sorry, I'm going to ask you first. How do you okay. feel about 50-50? And remember, we're not just talking about your little perfect marriage now. So in the context well, I mean, of but see, general. You know what? I, I Okay. I'll preface it like this. Um, my niece is no she was in a relationship she's no longer in a relationship i have multiple nieces so i'm not saying any names however (laughs) um (laughs) however we she was getting serious about this young man and she she was thinking about marrying him and i told her i said 
you might your mom might not agree with me, but I'm telling you, you need to live with it. Because the only way you're gonna know someone is to live with them. Oh, you and mean first you, before marriage? First before marriage, mm -hmm. and that way you know how they how they clean, how they sleep, what their habits are, what their spending is, all of that, and therefore you have a better idea of what you're going into later on. Because if you can't live with it now, you won't be able to live with it later on. Amen. So, so um, my my advice to anyone is how you start is how you finish. Um, and for me and in my house, I'm just speaking for Mario in my house. Mm -hmm. We don't, it's not always 50, 50, but you always know that your part, your person has your back. And that's the most important thing because mm -hmm. someday I'm going to be able to hold my wife up and other days she's going to have to hold me up. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do in terms of money, you, money too, because you have to remember, you know, unfortunately, I'm I'm medically retired. So my income is not as high as my wife. So right. therefore, mm -hmm. but we don't hold it. She's never held that over my head or vice versa. When I came into a windfall, I don't hold that over her head. Right. So, right. you know, it's just, but you're also talking to somebody who's been with someone. I was just going to say, you know. even when I met you, though, you were bringing in some change because I know how I yeah, met Yeah, but, but back then I was making, but, but, but that, but back then I was making substantially more money right. than she was. Right. So, you know, but it, it never was a, a matter of someone's holding the other one, the holding the first string. It's like, what do, what do we need? How can we move forward? What right. do we want to do? And mm -hmm. if you go into, into any relationship saying about the us, instead of the I, then you'll be okay. But if you're talking about what the I and what I need and what I want, you'll you'll never get anywhere. You'll never okay, find that. Okay, well, let me, let me throw a wrench into this because I should give the, you know, I should have gotten the video that, that uh, Joel sent uh, because that would have given prenup. some different, yeah. but the prenup. Because what the lawyer was saying, and he was saying it so eloquently and so well, he was just saying, and, and I'm not going to do it justice, but he was saying, you go into it, you have the conversation, it forces the conversation. And if you really love each other, you can have the conversation about money. A lot of people don't have the conversation because they're all like, oh, I love him. He loved me. We never going to leave each other. Did it have the no. conversation about money. And he's like, what's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. What we make together is each it's other. Ours. Simple yeah. is ours. And so if you have a, and that he was just saying it was a simple prenup. He was saying, if, if, if you build something together, okay, then you know, that's going to be half and half. It's not right. saying your marriage is doomed or something. No. Or like He's just saying, be no. clear about it so that she could buy her hair. I, I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no hair, no share. No hair, no share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was on the floor. That was so funny. How do you feel about it being someone who who has gone through divorce? What's your thought process on it? Yeah, I mean, as far as like from the experience I had, we didn't make like completely different ranges of money, so I like, couldn't really ever say like you know, oh, we make so much more than me. Da, da, da. So, um, what's his is mine. <laughs> what's yeah. Cynthia, Cynthia said? what's mine is mine. What's his is mine. <laughs> what's mine is mine. And what's yours is mine. <laughs> That reminds me of a Little Rascals episode. This little kid was giving out candy. She's like, one for you, one for me. One for you, two, two for me. Two for me. One for you, two for me. <laughs> no, for that's me. not how this works. Smart, <laughs> smart person, though. <laughs> Come on, now. That, that person's rich today. Entrepreneur anyway. right there. Entrepreneur. Right? Mary. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, as far as prenups, I think I said to you earlier, I was like, it's just... I think it's an individual thing, a couple, couple they have to decide what they want to do, you know. Um, I, I can't make a blanket statement for everybody. Everybody's situation is going to be different, you know. Mm -hmm. They may they may die making the same amount of money the whole time, or one of them could get rich, and then it's a problem. I don't know. Money's a number. I also look at it as, so let's say somebody doesn't make a whole lot of money, but the other one that don't, they might be actually physically working like a dog, yeah. So it's like, you know, give me some props too, because I'm sitting here working like a dog Hustle. and Hustle. you have an easy job. So it's like, eh, this so, is still, but you know, I don't know if it's, so I'm just going to say this. I don't think that they're, that he, the, this lawyer was specifically talking about a value judgment on money, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he did say at one point, the, 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 the person interviewing him said, 
So yeah, like she moves into your $8 million house. Now you have to give half of that to her when it's over, right? It's his house. If it's over, yeah. But, I mean, if it's over. So he's like, and he didn't say, yeah, that's why. He was like, you need to have the conversation. I think his point was not like, don't give her half or she doesn't deserve half or whatever. He was saying people go into relationships nowadays and they go into it because I'm sorry, men too, everybody wants the wedding. Everybody wants to be married, but nobody realizes how much work it can take mm. and what changes over time. Like you said, Mario, live with somebody first. I agree with that 100%. See how they eat 24 seven. Can you handle their cute little idiosyncrasies after every yeah. day at the kitchen table? <laughs> yeah. I, um, I mean, I, I just, I, I stand on that. You know, a lot of people are very traditionalist, but I am, I am not. I be, I would tell my own daughter that. Um, I would say, hey, you need to figure that out first. You need to figure out if that's something you can live with for a, for mm -hmm. a lifetime. Because otherwise, you you say, oh, I'm I'm so in love. He's so great or she's so great and i just wanted i'm love 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 well that gets old mm -hmm. and so you know you got to be able to like the person and and know who they are know what their spending habits are know if they have any type of addictions watch out for all of that stuff anything you know and, and look at that's not love at the beginning we all think no, it that's is. love is when it's hard love it. shows itself when things are not easy when yeah. somebody's in pain or addicted or falls yeah. into an accident or loses that you know eight million dollar house or yep. whatever it is, that's when love comes into play. And love that's does it. not clean the house. Love does not pay the bills. Love does mm -hmm. not drive your kids to school. <laughs> nope. Uh -uh. Like, love, love does, does not, not wash the dishes. The house. I wish it did. <laughs> love does not wash the dishes. Love wash the clothes. Do. It don't wash the clothes. It don't walk. It don't walk the dog. Nah, don't nah, clean nah. the toilet. <laughs> right. Okay. Here's the thing. I I would have said before mm. this that I will never get married again. But I would get married again. But I would definitely do a prenup with anybody. I would. I, well, I would. Yeah. I would get I married mean, again with a prenup. Let me. I, I I have a perfect example. I know you don't watch reality shows, but I do. No, it's okay. That's why um, you uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, Candy Burst. She was on the show already. She met her husband because he was working production on the show. Okay. He had to he had to leave production because they decided to date. Now, once they got serious and they wanted to, and they decided to get married, she asked for a prenup because Candy Burrs is a multi hyphenated person. She has Grammys. She has mm -hmm. millions and millions of dollars before she met him. So therefore she, her mother and her were like, I need to protect what's mine. That's right. Because she also, but she also had a daughter. So she was also protecting her kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and he had, a, he had a daughter as well, but he again was not in the same, you know, right. tax bracket. And so therefore she was like, look, Whatever you bring to the table is yours. Whatever I bring to the table is mine. And then after that, let's work, let's work on it. Now they've gone on to do, be extremely successful. They have like three restaurants. They have oh you wow, know, Good for them. They, yeah, they have three restaurants. They have a production company. They're doing extremely well. They produce films and TV shows outside of Housewives. Okay, right. So so, but all of that stuff they built together. Right. right? So that's the stuff that they have to worry about together. But, you know, but she's still kind of coddling his ego, which is unfortunate because. What do you mean coddling his ego? What does that because mean? Because he's like, he's like, I want to do this and I want to do that. She's like, well, Ty, where's the money for that? You know, because. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's right. like, where's the money for that? Because where are we pulling that money from? Right. And so those are the conversations they're still having. But, but she seems to be very businessy. I mean, she's not wrong. Straight up and down. Yeah. No. I would say too, if if like you said, tax bracket, I love that. If you are in totally different tax brackets, I understand a prenup. That's that's should be almost obvious because it's like, you know, some people they act like they love you, but that's not ultimately what they're looking for. Unfortunately, that happens sometimes. Not no. everybody. Not everybody. But you know what? I don't even know if it's about tax brackets. I just think if if you really don't fear losing this person you're in love with, what's the big deal? Just to protect his own or your own. I don't. I never understood the drama. Like you're so insulted because I guess you think 
like for me, it's the reverse, right? Why are you getting so triggered because somebody's asking you for a prenup because they have, okay, so I'm, I'm coming to this from a different point of view, right? So I work for a lot. I have worked for a lot of different people. I've worked for wealthy people who, and Mari, you know, some of these people, some of them have <laughs> prenups. Some of them did them not. Don't. Both yeah. sides have divorces that come into play. Yeah. And Oh my goodness. Let me tell you the women that are in, and I am going to say women that had mm -hmm. the prenups and had the, okay. I shouldn't say like that. The two examples I had where the women had less money than the man, the men who are big time people or whatever in this town doing whatever mm -hmm. they do, but signed a prenup mm -hmm. were much easier for them themselves to walk away because they yeah. knew what they needed to do to walk away from a bad situation. And they knew what they were coming into and what they were taking with them. Cause they had a exactly. prenup. And here's the thing, exactly. prenups like that also come with like, you decide like after, uh, after the first or second year of marriage, you get a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. You, you yeah. do a, you know, you do a negotiation or whatever, but if you cheat on me and that's when it gets into all that intricacy, you know, mm -hmm. But yeah. those women, and I would say one of them was emotionally abused. I mean, it's not wow. for me to say, but right. when she left, I was like, go ahead, girl. Go <laughs> into my you know, I had since quit working there, but I think that was the other part of it too. Like I wasn't there when they got married, but my thought process is, is if you walk in knowing what you know, that that belongs to him and this belongs to me and I'm coming and I really love him. I'm a respect that that's his stuff. And that is for his child or his family, but we're gonna build something together. We're gonna start fresh here. Mm -hmm. right? like, that's how I always said, but women get so I shouldn't say women. No, people not just women. So offended men too. When somebody yeah. says a prenup. Yeah, I, I mean I, I I again I'm coming from a different point of view because like I said, being I'm I've been together almost 30 years. So whatever. You know, it, Whatever. I mean, it is what it is. It <laughs> that's all my jealousy. That's all my jealousy coming out. <laughs> it is what it is. You know. Um, you know what I hate about you too is that you really do love each other. Like I do. I yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I do. That's like my heart and my soul. You well, know. Well, I just, excuse me as I. Well. <laughs> sorry. It is I what know, it is. right? Again, my jealousy. Um, <laughs> Um, Melanie said, if you need a prenup, should you really be getting married? Just stay single. Well, no, it depends on, it depends on what's at, at, on the table, you know? And again, because like I said, that example of, of Candy, she had a daughter, you know, she had a legacy already in place. So she had to protect her kid and I get it, you know? But and I think she... it comes from a place of um, more religiosity, like Christianity, the idea that when you find your soulmate, you're going to stay together forever. And the idea is if you sign a prenup, you're already deciding you're not going to last. And I think that's, a, a, I think it's an old way of thinking, but I respect what Melanie's saying. Yeah, I've never I, thought of it that way. No, but. I get it. But I mean, I also see people as using it as, as a safety net, you know, because you just don't know until you know, you know, and again. That's why you said, that's why you said live with somebody first. A hundred percent. I stand on it. I will stand on it. <laughs> I I stand so on I can't it. call you tomorrow that I'm getting married because you don't know that I've been living with somebody for five years. How long should I live with somebody first? You tell me. You know what? I don't tell anybody. I don't give anybody a definition. You know when you know, because again, uh, my, uh, my, my, my niece, she, she had enough. She, she was in there a long time, but long enough to know she was in there too long. She wasn't, she wasn't in too long, but she was in there long enough to know that that wasn't going to work for her. So you just, you know, when you know, you, you start looking for the red flags. And then if, if the red flags keep popping up and you keep ignoring it, shame on you, mm -hmm. not shame on them, shame on you, because you're, you know, Take those rose, those rose colored glasses off. I think it's hard. I think it's hard. I think it's hard. The glow of love is fun in the first year. Get past the first year, mm -hmm. and then you know that second year they it it those walls start coming down, and you start really seeing. What's I think what. it depends on how long you've known the person too, right? So if you've known someone for twenty years and you guys get together, you should still live together because it still changes things. It still changes things when you live. Like I don't know if I can ever live with somebody ever again. I just, 
I don't feel it in my bones. <laughs> like, I don't care how fine you are either. Like, you need to leave as soon as possible. I wonder about that too. Like, I'm kind of, it's not about being set in my ways. It's going to have to be a very spectacular person that understands. And we have to have a very big place. We have to have a big place. That's going to be, like, I need to have my wing. He needs to have his wing and we can meet in the middle. <laughs> and then you go back to your own size. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe a guest house might be nice if he's really a pain in the neck. You sleep around a guest house tonight. No, 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 no. I just need him to, yeah, I don't, it's not even about him. It's like, I just think I have always been some, look at my best relationship. We lived in different states and we saw each other um, every other week. Mario, I think you knew me when I was dating. Yeah, like, but but you know who's but, like that right now? Who? Shirley Ralph. She's been married to her husband almost 30 years and they live in yeah. different states. See, it, I think I'm that works. person. And they do it on purpose. Yeah, okay, Mel just uh, said a long courtship should show you what you need to know. I do not think living with someone outside of marriage is the answer. Okay, because Melanie's old school. She old fashioned. I kind of love that, but you I, I get it. I'm a respect. I, 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 I understand that and I get that, but I respectfully disagree because yeah. you don't know you really don't know someone until you live with them. And that's yeah. just the truth of it. Because people People will court you and they will be this this wonderful person. And then as soon as you get in the house, you'd be like, wait a minute, what when did you start leaving your drawers on the floor? Wait a minute. <laughs> right. When did you, you it, right? But 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 just to as you said respectfully, um, this is also more of a uh Rick, how do I say this? A Christian uh more, thought no, process, a, which is yeah, yeah. No, I, is, and, 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 conservative, traditional, that's very conservative. Tradi- yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll, to be the contrarian, I can't say I learned anything new when I got married and moved in with my wife. I knew everything, but I knew it for a right. really long time. How long did you know years. before you guys got married? We were friends for many years. We were boyfriend and girlfriend for like three years, engaged for probably another couple of years. So I knew her for a long time. There was nothing okay. really new okay. that I learned. Yeah. Okay. Except her said- level of how to cook. That's the only thing I was like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I lived with one for four years before engagement, and then we got married after 13 years together. Mm. Wow. Uh-huh. Um, Alma is in the house. She's going to tell us on Mario. Okay, I say communicate to your partner the things that are making you unhappy or causing concern. If nothing changes, then it's on you to self-reflect and either say, I will live with it or I can't. That's, mm-hmm. And, and that's, the, that's the conversation we had with our niece. Got it. Uh huh. I can relate to Rick's courtship. Same here. Still not married. Still not married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, at, I think whatever works for you. I feel uh, the traditional old school thing. I think, especially if you're connected to your Christianity, that may work for you. Um, and mm-hmm. and it may not. Um, and maybe there's a different way. But I think what Mario's point is not to speak for you, Mario. But no. you're saying there are things that change when you live with someone, when you're with someone 24-7 that you will yes. not get with just going yes. on dates every week. Yes, yes. And I'm dropping you off at the house and giving you sweet kisses and sending you, you know, the yeah. courtship is, the courtship is very, very sweet. And, you know, that's, you know, I did all of that, you know. <laughs> the, the, the courtship now is a swipe. <laughs> right. it's, like, man, it's not the same as back in the day like, no <laughs> it was fun thanks mm. it's like an emoji right, right. <laughs> or well, the three dots just keep you waiting <laughs> well, that's, you got an iPhone I got an iPhone but I hear you right. but yeah I mean I think that's the thing is that it's changed so I don't know if a courtship in the truth but I don't even know if marriages back then lasted I think people you know I grew up Catholic and so many people were in miserable marriages because they would not divorce because, you know, to get it's a sin or whatever it was. And and they were just miserable. And I don't know if that's the well, right. Sweet, sweet piece that she's uh, 28 years together and we still haven't gotten married. But see, that's a choice, too. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. But that's a choice. Mm-hmm. And and there's I don't see anything wrong with that because I had an aunt who who was who became a domestic partner with my with her with her mm-hmm. guy. And they didn't get married forever. They 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 were together for like twenty plus years before they got married. Before mm-hmm. they said, "Well, you know, we're just doing it just because." 
Well, look at, I think that's great. The only thing I would say, and, you know, because this is, you know, Oprah and Stedman are the same way, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell? Right. That way. Kurt, the only Kurt, thing Kurt I would say is make, sh- is that his name? Kurt? Did I yeah, miss something? Kurt, mm-hmm. okay. Kurt Russell. I think mm-hmm. what you need to make sure is that when you're not married, you do not have privilege to go to the hospital or to do these things. So you have to make sure you have that stuff written up with lawyers. That's true. Yeah. After 28 years, yeah. you want to be the 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 person, the go-to person and not the person's yeah. ex, whoever, yeah. or cousin or brother or whatever, who will come yeah. to claim. So, and not, yeah, I'm not so. trying to say that on Sweet Pea, but just, just know that's the other part of that. I agree. I never want to get married again, but I use the word marriage as like, I would love to be in a long-term relationship with someone. You know what I mean? But I don't know if I yeah. need to get married again. Oh yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Stuff has to be in order. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't it also depending on the state too, like when you're married a certain number of years, it's considered, what's it called? Married? I don't like common law tale. marriage. That's all a whole wives tale that does do nothing in the legal form when mm-hmm. your husband or wife is in the hospital, don't play that game. When your partner, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When your partner's in the hospital, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, you got to get all that stuff it, taken care of because I, I, yeah. I get, I get it. But you want to make sure because other people look. At, I've had to write down, and this has nothing to do with marriage. I've had to write down in a will, and I have nothing. What I want to happen to me and all my little things, and if and if I'm in a hospital bed, God forbid, and, and about to, you know, going to be in a coma or something like that. I've had to write that down because I don't want quote unquote blood family to think they Making can that decision in after all these years. So my family, my chosen family are those legal people. You know what I mean? Right. And when I had that surgery a couple of years ago, I had to send a legal document to Cynthia because I know Cynthia would be the person who would make sure to stop anybody who thought they would be able to do anything if something were to happen to me other than the people I requested and Cynthia, you know what I mean? Like, so you, everyone should have that on point. And let me just say this, since we went down this rabbit hole a little bit, um, the reason why I am like this is because the reason why I ended up in the childhood that I ended up in is because my mother never did that and never Mm. told anybody what she wanted done. If God forbid something happened to her and she had always been in the hospital in and out, in and out. Right. So I ended up not being taken care of by any one person. Look at Cynthia, yeah. I got your back. I know, baby. <laughs> I know. But, but, but you know what I mean? Like, that's why I do that. And I encourage everyone to make, and it's free. It doesn't co- go to your state website and find out um, all the things you need to know about simple wills, um, your living mm-hmm. will. You know, it goes back right. to that donor thing. All those things are free. It's yeah. a little bit of you doing a little investigation. It's very simple, and, and you you can take care of whatever your wishes are. It's a POA, but it's another one, too. Power of attorney. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, it's a power of attorney, but you can have, you can. Um, a designated, um, like if you're about to die or something. Well, for example, my my grandmother was ill. My mother was out of the state. But we made my cousin in charge of my grandmother legally. But I can't remember the name of the document we had to do. I think it was a living. There's a living oh. will, but then there's the one. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. So we'll put that. I'll put that in the show notes. I'll yeah. put that information in the show notes so that we don't give anyone bad information. Yeah. But I'll look yeah. it up in the show notes for people in the podcast. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. During that surgery, I had I had Andrea. And my doctor be the people to make a decision about if something were to happen to me that, and then Drea would overstep the doctor, but that way I knew that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. so there is a word for it. I know what you're talking about so that they can make that decision on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's slipping my, it's yeah. on the tip of my oh, tongue. A proxy. But a proxy. Cynthia just wrote proxy. it. That's yeah. right. Look at yeah, yeah, this is like, because I read all your crap. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably saying, I wrote that five minutes ago and you finally see it now. You know what? Right. She works in a hospital. I mean, that's what she does. She works in an emergency room, so she knows all this stuff. You Sorry. Alma's know. comment? Sure. I also, this is Alma. I also ask about finances. What debt do they have, et cetera, and what expectations are, if and when you move in together. These are the most stressful conversations, and it will tell you a lot about them. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's right. People and are I funny think with that's money. What that lawyer was saying was have the conversation. Have yeah. the conversation about money. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Traveling with somebody will tell you everything you need to know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how they treat listen. service workers. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, I can listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen. I, I went to Europe with some people and they I'm like, OK, you got me. But never again. <laughs> mm, never again. <laughs> I said, you you mm -hmm. got me because they they invited they kind of you know they came along because we went to go see my daughter in Switzerland uh -huh. and they came along <laughs> boy baby. ever again well I'm going I'm going with 14 women to the Caribbean for 10 days I know I already know <laughs> like this is gonna be a one time thing for me <laughs> and then Cynthia and I next year are going to Ireland uh so that'll be nice. great. Well, Cynthia and I will be cool. I don't have any issues with Cynthia, so. 14 Cynthia now. Well, Did you rent the entire floor in. of the hotel? The whole floor is our floor. So look at, here's <laughs> the thing. No, no, no. We, it's all hotel rooms everything. But here's the thing. These women go every year. They get, they uh, leave their husbands and their children. My, and my they wife said, good luck. <laughs> no, no, no. And then, and they go every year and they hang out and they happen, they invited me because I, I went to the funeral and they said, why don't you come? I said, you know what? I need a break. I'm going to go. So yeah. I'm actually invading their space. So I'm going to be the good person. I just want to go and be on the beach. And that's all they do. They go be on the beach. They drink. They go scuba diving. They go. So I, I think it'll be fine. But in my yeah. head, I'm like, 14 women. That's a, lot. <laughs> that's a, lot. That's a reality yeah. show right there. <laughs> yeah. You know my cousin. You know my, my cousin, Nikki. So Yeah, I know Nikki. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Alma was asking me, she's like, she knows Nikki, right? I'm like, yeah, she knows Nikki, but I don't know what her next comment was. So, Oh, um. But she, we're supposed to be traveling next year to go to Ireland. Oh, no, really? We're going, we're going, no, we're going in 2025. Yes. Yeah, 2025. We're going we're, to Scotland and Ireland. Really? We're doing Scotland and Ireland as well because are we, we've been doing our lineage um, and my great great grandfather is Irish, and his oh. last name was Dunlap. And we did the we did the the history, and we found where he, oh, his people wow. came from in Ireland. So we're going to Ireland in twenty in Scotland in twenty twenty five to go see his homeland. Okay, cool. well, you need to tell. We need to talk, and maybe we'll see each yeah. other at the same time. <laughs> that would be great. That'll be great. I also have um, British and Irish in my. I did twenty three and Me and Ancestry. Which one did you do? Mm -hmm. You we did, did the both. both. Yeah. yeah. So but, did I. Is, but we actually have. We actually have our grand. We have our his actual picture. Oh, you did my, the. Oh, you did the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. No. My great. My great grandmother always had pictures, so we mm -hmm. have his actual oh, picture. So, so we. And we have a picture of him in his bolero. If you go, I, I, I'll have to repost it. But I have a picture of him posted on my um, on my Facebook page, and and it's a great picture of him. His name is Oliver Dunlap. And oh, so, that is so awesome! Wow. Yeah. Okay, we gonna have to. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are going. Do you, yeah. do you know when you're going? About we haven't decided. No, yet. we haven't. We haven't decided yet. We're we're still talking about our dates, but we've already we said next year because we're doing stuff. Right. We're doing, about, right. Everything is about my kid this year, so. Right, and Cynthia's you know. going to Greece or something this year, and I'm going okay. to the Caribbean, so the year after, so we're going to 2025. The only month I'm not going is, we're sure of not going in August. Now, I wanted to go, but in Scotland, they have the arts fair, which is a mm -hmm. big deal, and we thought about going because I thought it'd be great, and then I was like, it's going to be too many people. I'm so really proud. one of those people, I just want to go. Like, I like to go to one place and stay there for a few days. I don't want to go to 95 different countries. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so, yeah. so we're not going to go in August. So, but yeah. you guys might go in August because you, you like to see all the cool stuff. No, right? I don't. Oh, yeah. oh look. No, no. <laughs> well, I you, kind of like Alma. You, you, you forget. Tourist. Alma and I are very different. Alma's the, she's the tourist girl. She wants to go to every single stop. She wants to see every single thing there is to see. Me, I'm good. Like I have targets. I want to hit this, this, and this. Once yeah. I've done that, I'm good. Yeah. But the, her, she's she's like go, 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 go. Oh yeah, and no, then, I'm so like I just want to sit in one place and get to know the neighborhood, yeah. and I want people to know my name by the time I leave after five days. Yeah, yeah. Like I had FOMO one time when we went and when they they left me to go to the Lint Chocolate Factory in Zurich. 
and I didn't go because I had, was just exhausted. And I'm like, right. oh, I'm staying in. But that was the only time. Other than that, I'm good. Right. Rick, you gonna be traveling soon? Oh, I know you can't, but you want mm. to travel. I know, I know. One day, one day. One day, you will, you will. I've been to uh, Portugal, Canada, Bermuda, so I've seen a few places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always wanted to go to Lisbon. I haven't. That's that's on my bucket list. So my, so my, I found out that my father, because you know, I know nothing about my father, is Portuguese. Yeah. That's so. I can, I can see that. Right. I can see that. Yeah, that's why we get along so well. That's why we get along, yeah. But like family and everything. And I was just looking at my 23 and me the other day, so it's really funny that we're talking about this. I just looked it up the other day just to see if it was any different because they updated a lot, you know. They updated a lot, yeah. But I'm still Portugal is my is mostly where I'm from, which is weird. It still freaks me out. Beautiful place. No, no, but I mean it's just weird because I I think I told you it's in it's part of my second book that I'm writing that. Cause I did it like 10 years ago or maybe 11 years ago. Right. So mm-hmm. when I first did it and it came back that I was 51% Caucasian. Caucasian. It, it came, you know, when it, cause you know, they've been updating it as they go along mm-hmm. so yeah. the beginning. And it was like 51% Caucasian. I, I it was 52%. I started crying. I was so upset and people thought I was upset because I was white or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's because my entire <laughs> life, I've been treated a certain way and we yeah. are so much more alike than we are not alike. And yes. racism sucks. Yeah. And to be told that you're 52% of something. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's you what understand, Mario, right? I think you both yeah. understand what I'm saying. It was. Yeah, I do. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I get it. So, mm-hmm. you know, I understand that. But it's, but it's also important to know where you come from. Oh, there we go. You know. okay. So now we're going down a whole other. We don't have to talk about this so much. That was what we are at the hour something mark. So I'm gonna have to yeah. cut this off. I, okay. Mario, thank you for stopping by. Charlie, I know Charlie's watching this show. I was gonna say, is he on now? now? I know. You know what? He's probably like Mario's on. I ain't gonna bother though. <laughs> like, oh, I know no. he's on. Come on in. No, in the room. Charlie's like you. We don't need no one else when it's you on, baby. You know what I mean? Stay right. So thank, thank you. you. I missed you so much. I missed you too. So thank you. Thank you for stopping you. by. I want to thank everybody in the chat and everybody who's listening. And I'm gonna give some love again to LinkedIn. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. We keep adding more and more people. Yes. And yeah, thank you everyone. And remember, it's all about the joy. It's, it's always all about is. the joy. Bye, guys. See you next time. Thanks for stopping by All About the Joy. Be better and stay beautiful, folks. Have a sweet day.